Hi all you carnets out there. Today I wanted to talk about something that's pretty universal. It doesn't matter where you live or what you do, and that thing is, everyone loses money when they buy and sell a car. Right? Right? Wrong. Some people actually make money when they buy and sell a car, and today I'm going to give you the tips that I've personally learned over the years which ensure that I almost never lose money on cars. Interested? Then let's have a quiet little chat. So this video actually seemed jinxed and took about three attempts to make. First of all, Storm Arwen knocked out all of our power at the garage, meaning we had to work by torchlight and make tea with a camping stove looked after. They always... Then a cold snap affected all my camera gear, causing batteries to fail. My iPad became erratic, oh, and then my studio light, lights my went off. Isn't... One after the other. So I'm, I'm absolutely delighted to say that I passed the 15,000 subscriber mark this week. And so, as promised, I owe you guys a quick tour of my new man cave. We'll do this at the end of the video, so keep watching. So yes, most people lose money when they buy and sell a car. Usually because they are buying a boring daily driver to ferry the family around, or they're buying a cheap throwaway car to drive into the ground. And of course, the worst way to lose money of all, buying a brand new car and driving it off the dealership's forecourt. Boom, a 20% loss of value immediately. Now, I think that buying a cheap car can be a smart move. It's great to have a car that you don't need to worry about too much. Muddy footprints in the back. No problem. Dog hair in the boot. Who cares? Scratched paintwork. Me. However, if you fancy buying a car that will actually appreciate in value over time, instead of losing you money, then this video is for you. So, just to be clear, yes, I'm Chris the Alpha Nut, but these tips apply to any brand of cars, the same principles apply. Buying the right car and holding onto it for a year or two can make for a smart investment, but only if it's the right car. Buying a base model diesel with 200,000 miles on the clock and hoping that it will become a collector's item is not going to make you rich, I'm afraid. So you need to be looking for cars that fit certain criteria, such as original, non-messed with cars with low mileage, one-owner cars, special or limited editions or top-spec examples of cars with desirable engines and options. They're a good rule of thumb. However, don't think you can only go for cars which are considered pretty or appealing because you'd be wrong. <laughs> More on that in a moment. So cars which have fallen out of favour due to fashions changing and have lost value to the point where they get scrapped rather than get repaired is a typical example of the value cycle of many cars. Now this value cycle typically has five stages and it works like this. So a new car is expensive, desirable, and generally well cared for. A used car, well, once a car is a few years old, it's less valued, it's more abused, and the servicing may have started to be neglected to save money. Older cars, hmm. Cars which are over 10 years old or high mileage are not valued at all due to being considered an out of fashion knacker, as we say in the UK, or beta for our US viewers so they're more likely to have been modified and abused by young drivers and neglected even more. So finally, cars that are crashed or fail their yearly MOT, well, many examples of the model are then removed from the road due to scrapping or being put away with the idea of restoring them later. And we all know what happens when uh, people do that. Once most of the examples have gone, really only the cared for examples remain and the prices then start to rise when people realise that they're now scarce and becoming desirable again. Some of the least desirable cars of all time are now worth lots of cash due to the rarity factor.
Palenco's got room. Palenco's got room. Miles and miles of room. Change up to top. Allegro has the room to stay. 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 Allegro has the room. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Austin Allegro, for instance, had numerous problems for any poor soul who bought one, <laughs> such as the crazy square steering wheel. And the fact that it looked a bit like a cross between an alpha sud and a cow pat. Today, however, the Allegro is a bona fide classic. So, speaking personally, when I look for cars to buy in the UK, I tend to search places like eBay, Facebook Marketplace, um, and also the car groups on Facebook, because uh, the enthusiasts on there do tend to look after their cars better. One word of warning though, if you search these car groups, the enthusiasts on there who are selling their cars tend to think that they're generally worth a bit more than perhaps they are. If you're in the USA, for instance, Craigslist is another good example of somewhere that people will sell potential classic cars that they don't think are worth very much. And I've had a few really great bargains by thinking laterally, thinking outside the box and acting quickly to grab a great bargain when it appears. And uh, generally speaking, I think if you treat people with respect, go and view the car in person, don't mess them about, make them a fair offer, and um, you'll get a real bargain. Oh, that's a nice shiny car. Oh, yes, that looks pretty. It's shiny and it's polished and the wheels are shiny and the, 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 the tyres look good and, and the windscreen's all nice and clean and, oh, yes, I'll buy that. You know, it, it never ceases to amaze me how many people who don't have a great deal of specialist car knowledge are willing to take a chance on buying a car without having it checked by somebody experienced or knowledgeable. Any time you buy a used car and you don't want to get any nasty surprises and big bills when you get the thing home, you should be checking all of the important areas of the car. Suspension, the brakes, the tyres. Is there any rust on the car? Is there a full service history or has the servicing been neglected? Make yourself a list. And if you're still not sure, there are companies out there like the RAC, the AA, Green Flag, who will actually go and do a check for you. And many garages will too, if you ask them nicely. It's much cheaper to pay somebody a couple of hundred quid to check the car over for you thoroughly than buy an old nail, get it home, and then realize that you're gonna have a repair bill for five times what the garage would have charged you. I'd be really interested to know what you think is going to rise in value in the near future and which cars are going to be worth a lot of money eventually. So if you want to leave me a comment and leave me your tips, that would be much appreciated. So to summarize the list, number one, look for cars with limited availability, the ones that are rare, which makes them special and likely to rise in value. Number two, cars which were once considered cool or fashionable but which have now fallen out of fashion and are considered uncool again. Number three, don't look for cars at dealers or garages. Search the classifieds, find somebody who's got a car that they've treasured or a car that they think isn't worth any money anymore and buy that one instead. Number four, do your homework first. Decide which cars will suit your budget and which cars you're likely to enjoy driving and then do your homework on what typical problems those cars experience and then when you find one check it over carefully of course there are some cars that don't depreciate at all like the 8c that i drove recently and the new alpha julia gtam for instance which is pretty steep at 150,000 pounds but that will instantly go up in value for any lucky buyer as there are only 500 of those being built but generally speaking, newer vehicles do lose value as they get older, especially if you buy it brand new. However, picking the right car can mean that it actually gains value as it ages. Really? How about some actual facts then, Chris? Okay, so for instance, the James Bond movie Quantum of Solace featured black Alpha 159s in the opening chase sequence. Now, a special edition model of the car was built in the UK to commemorate the film appearance and even good examples of these are currently pretty cheap but they will undoubtedly increase in value over the next few years as only 250 were produced another good example of this is the vw carado my wife's favorite car back in the day hello darling 
essentially a prettier coupe version of a Golf. It even came with a V6 engine option, giving it great performance and practicality too. Built at the Carmen factory, only 97,000 were produced worldwide, and not many of these are left now, meaning that prices have risen accordingly. On the topic of exclusivity, did you ever wonder why used values of the Porsche Boxster have tumbled to the point where they're worth the same as a donut? Mmm, donuts. It's not because they're bad cars. Quite the opposite, they're great cars. However, because they were so popular, Porsche built so many of the blooming things, about 690 billion of them in fact, that they are now as common as lampposts. That means supply exceeds demand and the price crashes as a result. Simple. I like the Porsche Boxster, Mazda's brilliant little MX-5 was also produced in epic numbers. However, original examples of the early Mark I cars are increasingly sought after. Or, perhaps you fancy something fast and quirky, like the Fiat Coupe Turbo, which is already increasing in price as their numbers get fewer. Mad styling, turbocharged five-cylinder engine and a lovely interior? Yes, please. A Renault Clio Williams is another excellent choice. Great fun to drive, very practical and quick, but also starting to climb in value dramatically now. And of course, last but definitely not least, a late 90s or early 2000s Alpha, which are now in short supply, such as the 155, the 156, a nice GTV, or even a large practical four-door saloon like the 166. Any one of these cars in great condition with good service history will reliably increase in value over the next few years, especially if they have a V6 Busso engine. And you will have a lot more fun driving those than a brand new Kia C apostrophe D. So let's have a quick tour of the garage, shall we? Okay, so seeing as I've hit 15,000 subscribers, and I thank you very much if you've subscribed, by the way, I'm just going to give you a quick tour of the garage, even though uh, it's in a bit of a state of disarray at the moment because we're switching all of our stuff from the old unit back down to this one. Luckily, it's only down the hill, so uh, anything with wheels, we just take it to the top of the hill and let it go.
So I hope this video has given you some useful ideas about how to make money on your next car. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button down below. And I'll see you very soon for a full review of the Alfa Romeo Giulietta. Cheers, everybody.